Hello everybody and welcome to this episode, the positive one, of the Women Talking About Learning podcast. We were a day late publishing this week, and that's simply because we forgot there was a bank holiday in the UK, uh, and that's pushed us back a day. It's still definitely worth waiting for this episode though. I've been keen to do this episode, the positive one, for a while, and I'm delighted that we were able to record it. We all need a little bit of positivity at times, and I was really keen to see how our guests would would come at this topic. Our first guest is Gillian Jones. Gillian is Managing Director and Founder of Emerge Development Consultancy. Gillian partners with many organisations to implement culture change and has designed and delivered programmes of varying sizes to national organisations and independent companies. Gillian is also an author, having co-authored 50 Top Tools for Coaching, which was published by Kogan Page in autumn 2009, and a second book, How to Create a Coaching Culture Strategy, is now in its second edition. Our second guest is Natalie Ellis. Natalie is Managing Director and Founder of Rebox HR, a virtual HR consultancy for UK-based SMEs that she launched in February 2020. Natalie has significant commercial experience and worked for a number of high-profile companies, including the Woolworths Group, ASOS, Associated British Foods and Forterra PLC. With over 15 years' experience in HR, Natalie is fully CIPD qualified to Level 7 and holds Chartered Fellow CIPD status. Natalie is also an author, and her book, Launch Your HR Career, came out in January 2021. This is a brilliant conversation. This is Women Talking About Learning. This is Gillian and Natalie talking about positivity. Okay, so Natalie, it's really great to be here talking about a subject which is very dear to my heart, which is around positivity, because I think there's so much to explore here. And I guess it might be an idea to start by talking about sort of what do we mean by positivity? I mean, when you think about it, what does it mean to you? I think positivity to me is that feeling of being happy and comfortable in yourself. And when you are happy and comfortable in yourself, generally, I think that's when you become a much more of a positive person. So positivity to me is is multifaceted. And I think it's very individual to, to people. I think you're so right. And it's interesting, isn't it? Because we tend to say a positive person, a confident person. And... I think we go through variations, don't we? So sometimes I think to myself, is it that a person is a positive person or is it that they have great strategies for being positive? And and sometimes I feel that the labels aren't necessarily helpful because um, some people are labelled as not positive or they're negative people when actually maybe they process things differently and internally they feel positive as well. Yeah, definitely. I would agree with you on that one. Working with so many different types of people, um, you know, we we come across all sorts of walks of life in in our professions. And I think it's it's quite easy to put those labels on people as negative or positive. And when you're looking at, you know, there's always that two dimensional view. A lot of people will go and have a look at influencers, for example, online, and they will say, oh, they're a really positive and upbeat person. But ultimately, does that individual see themselves as positive or is it just a way that they portray themselves? So, yeah, it's, it's really interesting, a really interesting subject, this one. It is so true, isn't it? And I guess I'm thinking back through my life over times, you know, I'm, I'm pretty old now. So I've been through quite a long career and a lot of things. And I'm thinking about, um, you know, I haven't always been feeling positive about everything. In fact, there were times when I allowed my emotions to get so much Uh, the better of me that it was difficult to get into that and it's only really I think probably in the last 10 years when I've had so many tools and strategies that I have been teaching people and learning myself that I've been able to find it so more do you find that's the same for you I I think we've had similar journeys in in that respect so for me um, I mean I grew up in the 90s as as a you know as a child and ultimately a teenager and um, it was an era of absolute positivity but if you actually look at the economics of the 90s we were in a really deep recession it was pretty much doom and gloom and um, looking back at it now it's probably very different to how it was experienced perhaps so I took a lot of positives from um the Spice Girls they really influenced yes 
they really influence my drive and my passion and my career and a lot of people will find that really funny but they are incredibly resilient and the journey that they took themselves inspired an entire generation which is quite something when you when you think about it and I've actually carried those traditions on throughout my career but there are parts where you think crikey am I not doing so well today is there something that's missing and I think with the the world that we live in now so you know the blissful days of the 90s and then we come into to now we have more than we've ever had before so our attentions are in different spaces all the time so is it that you have work emails or is it that you have to answer a call or is there personal stuff going on that you know you really need to get you know get to grips with so at the moment um it can be quite clouded by what positive influences you have because sometimes it's difficult to see that silver lining when the going gets tough so I think it is no different in in our day-to-day lives as to how we look at it I think mindset is an incredibly powerful thing and having gone through the pandemic and having to deal with the influx of people running around like headless chickens going Mm. crikey what do I do about my business or what do I do about my job or how do I help this person or how do I keep my family safe all of this and then underneath that pile of stuff is a person somewhere (laughs) so it's easy to get bogged down with external influences when actually we should be looking in a lot more I'm not sure if that's how you see it as well absolutely I think that's so true there are so many people who say like you said I'm normally a positive person however during the pandemic um, things changed and and I certainly had the same experience I mean I know for many people so many people had difficult situations I've run my business for 25 years and we're face-to-face training or we were face-to-face training and in March 2020 we looked like we were going to have the best year ever so in terms of feelings I think I was on a real positive high and then I just lost everything you know, in a week, I watched every single booking going, and it was so hard, and it, it really hit me, um, you know, in, in such a strong way, it was so unexpected, and it was a very, very interesting journey, because, you know, for a few weeks, I think I was a bit paralysed, like many, many people, and then I had to kind of make some decisions, because I had a business, I had people, I had um, premises, we had high overheads, And I had a decision to make because I could have still carried on doing what I did and earning plenty of money, but I wanted to keep the business. I didn't want to be beaten by a pandemic. I thought Brexit might, you know, really affect us, but not a pandemic. And um, I remember actually going for one of my walks, as we all did, and I was listening to a um, a song and the lyrics said something like, because when you lose everything, you've got nothing left to lose. And I thought, you know what? Yeah, we're a startup. Let's behave like a startup. And it gave a whole new positive vibe to the business. We were still losing money, you know, out there, but we were doing something positive and practical. And that was really, really helpful. And I think the other thing that helped me to stay positive, and I'd love to hear what your experience of it was, Natalie, was um, being very goal orientated during that period. And what I did was I decided to write a book and I wrote a diary of every single day of the first three months of the pandemic, everything the government did, every briefing, everything in the world, but my battle to save my business as well. And I wrote it to raise money for the bereaved families of the NHS, because again, that helplessness was uh, seeing what they was doing and not being able to actually go out because I had to shield was really, really hard. And I now kind of look back on that period. And I think in terms of having to stay positive, and and, and if anybody ever does read the book, you'll see, I was a horrible mess most of it. I'd have a a Zoom call where I was with my team going, hooray, come on, we're gonna do this, it's gonna be fantastic. And then I'd go in the car and cry for 10 minutes. Um, But what about you though? What was your experience of trying to stay positive? So following from that, I do actually have a question for you is, do you feel that um, given everybody's differing experiences, that you feel that people are a lot more open with their emotions and how they're actually feeling? Do you think it's kind of opened that in a positive sense? Because 
all we're hearing at the moment is mental health crisis. Yes. There's a strain on the NHS. Yes, we, this is something I think that we can all agree on has been around for a very, very long time. This isn't something that, oh no, we didn't see that coming, but the pandemic has accelerated it. So do, do you think that people are being much more open about, actually, I'm not okay today? I think that's such a great question. And, and to a degree, I think the emphasis on mental health has um, allowed people to start to um, have the dialogue and talk about it. Um, I worry that the race back to whatever normality people are going to get back to is now going to be, yes, we want to hear about it. Yes, we want to help you be more positive. At the same time, could be productive. And so I think we really need to take care because there's still so many transitions going on, isn't there, for people? We're not there yet. We've still got a lot um, to do. And there's still a lot of emotion. I mean, I was talking to a friend the other day who, if you want to talk about positivity, the most amazing amazing positivity she had cancer recovered and now unfortunately has an incurable cancer not terminal but incurable most positive person ever she lost her mother and she lost her stepfather during covid but she still hasn't processed it because she hasn't had a funeral and i think there's a lot of people out there who need that positivity um, to help them but also need people to listen to them and i think this is where when we talk about positivity we've got to say we can't all be pollyanna about this sometimes we've got to say look it's all right to talk about your experience and if that if you feel that's negative that's bringing people down that's okay because you may not have spoken about it yet I know that's a very long answer to your question no no, no I'm just that if, care we need to take yeah absolutely I'm just interested in your take on it because you have such a diverse background and you work with so many different people um that I think it would be great to to understand those experiences because there might be people listening today that think actually is it okay for me to open up and the more we talk about it as, as cliche as it seems that the more people might be willing to say actually yeah I, I'm not I've not been feeling right for a while and perhaps I should have that conversation yeah. with those nearest and dearest to me and having a personal experience of mine is and the reason that I started my business two weeks before a pandemic by the way which is a <laughs> always a wonderful thing to do is um but I mean realistic you know hand on heart it's been the best thing that I've ever done wow. because it's allowed me to have that fantastic balance of positivity corporate life um for me was incredibly stressful and it's high pressure and I'm not saying that all organisations are like that, but I found that it was incredibly pressurising, not just on um, the time spent commuting, but also the time with my family. One of the things that I've recognised very early on in the pandemic is I'm working a heck of a lot. Mm. And I thought, do you know what? There must be a different way. There has yeah. to be another way. This can't be the be all and end all. And a lot of people say, well, you know, you're going to work until the day you die, um, which is not a positive thing to say. But we can we can laugh about it because, you know, the pension age is obviously increased and all sorts of things. Um, and I hear it a lot from employees of the clients that I work with. So, oh, no, we're going to be working forever. But it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. So now um, I'm very much more aware of my own mental health. Um, I have a fantastic family, a very supportive family. I've got two dogs. And the reason I wanted to work from home was because I could stay home with my dogs. <laughs> I'm finding that I'm taking pleasure in the simple things. And I think once you appreciate I, I hate this word being used so flippantly but gratitude is such a big thing to me so I have a five minute journal so you can you can get those online but I, yeah. or you can make your own but I've got a five minute journal and in the morning I list the things that I'm grateful for I also list in the evening what I've taken away and what I've learned for that day for my own development so I think gratitude and appreciation has been a really strong influence for me I'm, I'm really lucky to have what I have. I've got a home, I've got family, I've got, you know, yes, I can pay my bills every month. It's, but I'm finding that it's about being in the moment and not yeah. necessarily with the stuff that you surround yourself with. 
So you could have a very nice car, but it's probably been parked up for the past 15 years. Well, you're absolutely right. And you know, it's one of the paragraphs I wrote in my book. And I do remember watching TVM early on. And this is so shallow, so shallow. Um, and I was watching the presenters there um, wearing a beautiful dress. And I was thinking about all of my dresses up in the wardrobe that I used to wear when I went to work and heels and everything like that. And thinking, will I ever wear these again? And, and I wrote about it, you know, then during the pandemic, it didn't matter how big your house was it didn't matter what car you had it didn't matter anything at all that you actually had in a material fashion um, because we were all in the same boat then um, but your story is a great one I think you know to start during the pandemic and to remain there and Ginny naturally your positivity shines through which I think is wonderful and gratitude I agree is so important and I think sometimes when we mention the word mindfulness and we talk about mindfulness people go oh it's like a bit hippie-ish but again <laughs> it's one of the things which for me is so important about positivity because people get overwhelmed and to be able to go outside into a garden and just look around at something and think how lucky I am to do that to have children to think I'm blessed with these or family or a job that you love and think about something like that is a very very good way of grounding yourself isn't it and staying um, with that positive Positivity. And I think that, um, you know, when we get overwhelmed, it's the feeling of overwhelm which gets in the way of that. I speak to so many people who say, I shouldn't feel like this because I'm so lucky. I've got this, I've got that, I've got that. But I still feel down and I still don't feel good about it. And so it's trying to understand, isn't it, where do those feelings come from and you know I don't know people listening to this might think well is it a gender issue is it just women and I think the neuroscience has shown us that women do tend to overthink women do tend to use emotional ruminations more than men potentially but I think nowadays it's certainly a big issue for men as well and I think it's um, something that's being recognized and and trying to get men to talk about when they don't feel so positive is, is, is a big thing at the moment. Yeah, I, I agree. I work with a number of male CEOs. Um, so these are guys that have, um, shall we say, a mask. They wear a mask mm -hmm. day in, day out. Um, and they they could be having the worst day, but they've been like, no, 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 I'm, I'm fine. That's always the, the thing, isn't it? And I've spoken a lot about men's mental health, um, having lost relatives um, to, to their mental health. And the men in my life, um, shall we say, that, that sounds bad, but my, my dad and my brother and my, my husband, they've all had experiences with mental health, but they don't necessarily have that forum in which to express it. Um, it's, it's something that I think there's still a long way to go as with any mental health situation. But you you do find that they're, they're a lot less likely to use yeah. the term positivity or mindfulness and things like that. I think it all depends on what influences you have around you and the support network that you have. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the stronger that is, the better it is for everyone as, as part of that. So yes, perhaps it is um, more likely that women overthink. And a good point that you mentioned about overwhelm was that once you're in that period of overwhelm, that's all you see is yeah. problems. You don't identify any solutions. And it's very difficult to see the wood from the trees when you're in that situation. That's what leads to burnout. And that's what I experienced in 2019, which led to that decision yeah. of me starting my business. And it's it's one of those where you think am I doing the right thing and you know am I looking after myself you start to question so much and then one thing that I took away from it was to put myself so minimalism is something that's really helped me so I had a house full of stuff and I think <laughs> a lot of people can relate to this and you're sentimentally drawn to yes. these items so when I went through it all and I looked like you, I looked in my wardrobe like any woman does, um, you know, to match whatever Holly Willoughby's wearing that day, perhaps on this morning. <laughs> um, and you have a look through your wardrobe and you're like, crikey. Um, yeah, I'm never going to wear any of this stuff again. I work from home. I've taken my business virtually. 
I'm not going to need to go out and about. Comfiness is king. And I've sought a lot of comfort in. Um, so uh, have you ever had any experience with the Danish concept of huga? Oh, yes. Love that book. That was amazing. That really changed things for me, thinking about how they simplify it down and focus on that comfort and love. Yeah, Mike Viking, um, who is um, an author of The Little Book of Huga, which is the most popular one, defines that concept. He's also, um, he, has a, uh, he also has a podcast as well, which I, I find fantastic, which is with the Happiness Institute. And a place like that exists. I think that's wonderful that we <laughs> live in a world where this exists. Um, but one of the, the key points and the, the development things that I've learned from all of these Scandinavian type concepts is that you have to experience the negative to be able to appreciate the positive. Um, and one of the things I get asked very regularly in my HR capacity is, how do I develop my resilience? Yeah. I'm like, I can't teach you resilience. N nobody on this earth can teach you how to be resilient. You have to experience that yourself and drive that forward. So um, I'm always very skeptical around, um, so research and white papers and things like that are, are fantastic. I learn a lot from those things. But I, I do believe that resilience is something that is experienced and built upon. So when we're looking at the pandemic, the only thing like it that I can remember in my years of, of working um, was when I worked for Woolworths in 2008, um, when we hit the recession. Everything seemed to be closing down and it was a very grey period. And, and I think that the emotions and the mixture of different things that were happening during that time are relative to how we've experienced the pandemic. So anyone who worked through that time, I think have come through this, having right. learned experiences from that and then brought it forward into the, the current situation. So I'm not sure, if, do you think that we need to appreciate the negative, oh, sorry, experience the negative to appreciate the positive? I uh... I think it accelerates your feeling of positivity. So having had the negative experience during the lockdown that I had, certainly when I see what my team are doing now and what we're achieving and how business looks and it's fantastic, there's a real added zest I notice about what we're doing and what we're saying. There's, there's certainly the next level there. But I think, you see, negativity is relative, isn't it? Because, and, and it depends on who you are and how you live. Now, um, I've got mental health in my family. My mother was um, chronically bipolar. And so that's quite hereditary. And it means to a degree, um, I probably suffered from something called cyclothymania, which is a, a mild version. And it means that you live your life on highs and lows. So this is a very interesting concept around it. Um, I married a man who, who lives his life. So it's like, oh, that's nice. Oh dear, that's a problem. Oh, okay, this is good. Oh, that's not so good. Whereas mine is, oh, this is amazing. I love it. And oh my goodness, my world is falling apart. And I noticed that in my son as well, um, that there is some of that but we've learned techniques to really moderate that which has been very very helpful so what some people perceive as negative or positive would be very very different depending on a person's style and experiences I think really if we look at how do I become more positive it's about your ability to look into yourself at any given time and say what is going on with me and to not be afraid to do that and I think that's the problem a lot of the time we think I feel I don't know how I feel I feel like this and then we expect it to go away or not go away but we're not prepared to get it out put it on the table it's kind of a bit of murky work isn't it getting that junk in the trunk out and saying why am I feeling this way and what can I actually do about it and I think most feelings like that come from lack of control and feeling I can't control something and if we don't look at it we don't know what we're trying to control so it's, it's for me there is a process that I like to teach people which is catch it check it and change it catch how you're feeling at this moment and ask yourself is this useful for what I'm going to be doing or how I want to be if not change it and many many people don't realize that we are capable of choosing our behavior at any time and they think that people do things to them like people make me angry 
Yeah, definitely. And one thing um, I think has really become apparent is the, uh, so I've always been an advocate of workplace kindness. So I started um, a movement quite some time ago um, called HR Acts of Kindness. And it's trying to encourage people to look around them a lot more. So instead of being busy with just being busy at work, really being in tune with your teams and with your people and how you're seeing people respond to various situations. So one of the things that I, I gave them a task, basically a, a new task every day for them to follow and for them to just check in. And a lot of that was actually looking inwards as well. So it was very cleverly done um, in that respect. But I think it's it's easy to feel like you're you're busy. So is it a situation where it's solely about ability or is it a case of it's a question of capacity? Um, so I'm too busy to be positive. But once, from my own experience, I feel that I have yeah. I have been super busy since the pandemic. HR has been in demand. I can't get away from that. Um, but it's very easy to become blurred with what is HR, Natalie, and what is <laughs> what, what is your life, Natalie? It's like living with two people and a housemate that you really don't want. But what can you do? Um, so you can't necessarily escape that that persona. But what you have is making time and having one thing that's really helped me is having a structure. Mm-hmm. Is having a routine. So in the morning, seven o'clock, I go to the gym, mm-hmm. not because I want to. <laughs> I yeah. don't have much rather an hour in bed but I go in there and I've got to know the characters in there now yeah. and yeah. working from home can be incredibly lonely and when you're seeing regular people every day you're going out of your way to not just to socialize and everything else but it gives you that break from being in that square box all day and That's it true. gives you time to think because all you can do in the gym is do gym stuff. You yeah. can't go in there and just, you know, sit around on your phone and things like that. <laughs> well, some um, people do. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't know if, um, you know, if, if you think it is a question of capacity. That's an interesting question, isn't it? Because it's almost saying, do I produce a to-do list? And do I add to this um, at the top of it? And um, let's be positive. But in a way, there is something about that because I do a lot of work with programming and you know helping people to create neural pathways. I'm a practicing hypnotherapist as well. And um, one of the things I talk to them about in terms of choosing their behavior is as well as having a to-do list, have a to-be list. Um, because our brain responds to whatever state we ask it for. So if you wake up in the morning and you say, okay, what do I need to be today? And then it will give you that state. And often if you forget to do that, it's like if you have a really busy day, like you were talking about, and you go down to your desk, you think, oh my goodness, I'm overwhelmed. Look, I've got so much to do. Never going to get away from it. Then it's 11 o'clock and you've still done nothing at all. Whereas if you'd already said, what do I need to be today? I need, I need to be positive and productive. It kind of gives you that flow. And people sometimes wonder, why is it some days I can be really, really productive and other days I can't? And so, well, it's because you haven't chosen to be. And it's like, no, it's not that simple. Um, but but one thing that's occurring to me as we're talking as well, which I think is something interesting, is, is the concept of when people tell you to be positive. <laughs> and I was thinking, as we're talking about positive, yeah, 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 yeah. Look at all those things you've got to be positive about. You should be so happy about this. It's almost the other way around. And how I was thinking about it is my daughter had a baby in um, February this year. And of course, she'd had been pregnant through lockdown. She'd done it all through lockdown and um, had a beautiful baby. Everything was wonderful. But she suffered from mild postnatal depression. And um, part of the reason I think she suffered is because she was afraid to tell people she wasn't feeling how she expected to feel. Loved the baby no end. There was no question about that, but was not feeling that way. And when she started to reveal that, she started to feel a bit more positive. But the bit which really made it worse for her was when people kept telling her how wonderful the baby was and how lucky she was and, you know, everything like that. And she said, okay, I don't feel that way. And I think sometimes when we try and push a feeling on other people and say, well, surely you feel this way because you've got this, you've got that, you've just done that, that it almost makes me think, I better not say any more about this because I'm looking as if I'm really ungrateful. Yeah, definitely. 
like um like you my sister actually gave birth to um her son in February also oh, I became an auntie for the first time and yes she she does I can relate to that because some of the experiences that she has at mum and baby group she said well actually I love my baby to the ends of the earth but ultimately you know I don't sometimes I don't feel like me anymore yeah so it's like somebody else and you're on the outside looking in and I think that that is definitely something that um you know really does need that uh does need to be considered especially with new working mums um is is that situation so yeah it's it's definitely something that people need to um be in tune with and need to understand about themselves I mean if I said to you or if we had had this conversation five years ago I probably would have been a very different person to what I am now it's since instilling various practices which yes they can seem a little bit hippie-ish um and I do have like crystals on my desk and things like that very much into that positive energy um and I think it's whatever works for you as an individual so um my husband is autistic and he finds it rather bizarre that I have these little rocks yes. on my desk and that I have uh, I have some I surround myself with positive books I love books I, I love, love reading and I love learning and I think the more books you read and the more knowledge you, you find yes that book might not be for you but you might take away points from it that you think actually I will try that and I will see if it really works for me and with technology as well we have access to you know people want to learn how to meditate and things like that. I think that's wonderful um my stepdaughter is also autistic so um sometimes she can get really frustrated and wound up and it, it can be for the smallest of things I think people again we're still learning very much about autism um but her autism is very different to to my husband's they yeah. may be from the same <laughs> they may be from the same line but they are um very very different in their traits and how they approach various situations um but you're not expected to know everything mm. I think people need to give themselves a bit of a break and yeah I think that's that's one thing I put so much pressure and emphasis on my my career is probably the best example is that I put so much pressure on why am I not doing as well as that person sat next to me yeah. I'm working more hours than them I'm doing more for my manager than than they are and it it's it's horrible but we're in this situation you see it on influencers and instagram and even in very young children now who are looking at these these figureheads yeah. shall we say and expecting i should look like that i should feel like that and i should be like that absolutely the expectation and it, it, it causes this this real toxic view so that people aren't truly embracing who they are and they're not happy with who they are. Yeah. And they wonder why. Um, because we're not being taught differently. It's That's only so when true. we start so when we're being dealing with it ourselves that we, we get to that point. It is so true. And in fact, it was interesting you mentioned about um, your family with autism because I was working with a client yesterday and we're doing you know, some sort of workshop on um, careers and CV writing and presenting yourself positively. And one of the things I wanted to do a little bit on was neurodiversity and helping people to say, rather than saying I'm autistic, why not say I am brilliant at processing information in this type of way and to learn to perceive yourself positively rather than expect other people to be negative about um, you know, a neurodiversity that you might have. So we're, we're nearly we're nearly there, I think. Um, so do you think maybe before we finish, we should think about some of our sort of best tips for helping people to be positive? I think we've talked about quite a lot of them, but what would you say if someone's listening out there and thinking, I'm not feeling very positive today, what do I need to do? What do you reckon? I think, first of all, we need to, one thing that's really helped me is, is really simple is just to do something that makes you feel good mm -hmm. so if you're not feeling particularly positive I'm not saying go to the gym and do an hour um, or go running around the block until you're absolutely exhausted but what you can do is 
is it that you take luxury in a very you know in a cup of tea and looking out the window for five minutes mm. um is it that you go and sit in your garden obviously not on a day like today because it's chucking down with rain here in sunny northamptonshire yeah. but um one thing that we will you know that we can always have a look at is the simple things is it you know it's not sitting on the sofa all day because that makes you feel worse I think yeah. um because you feel like you've procrastinated but I take comfort in having that cup of tea having the window open looking outside and I just feel a lot better yeah. um so yeah that that would probably be that. I know that seems really really simple but it's something everybody can do and doesn't cost the earth I think people forget what they love doing, don't they? Um, perhaps just keeping that list there of what we love doing. And um, I've talked a lot about reprogramming the brain and I'm, I'm very, very keen on thinking about your dialogue and what you're actually saying to yourself and things like that. But one other thing that I've really learned this year, and I know I say it in the dying seconds of this, is about processed food and how ultra processed food can really affect your mood. And so if you are feeling a bit negative and a bit fed up or something like that, certainly I've really looked at my diet and looked at how it can be a lot cleaner. And I've really noticed the difference in my mood, my positivity, and perhaps feelings of control. So I think that there's mental things we can do, there's practical things we can do, as you say, but then there's also something we can look at in terms of our health and how we are feeling inside. Yeah, definitely. Do you know, Jenny, I could talk to you all day, every day about this. And it is a conversation, I think, that, um, you know, that, that could happen forever more. But I think Andrew will uh, will be like, oh, crikey, <laughs> overwhelm himself, bless him. <laughs> it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Absolutely. Well, absolutely. Thank you so much, Gillian. Thank I've you. appreciated talking to you too. <laughs> I'm sure I just sound like a stuck record because I get to the end of every episode each week and just think, that was great. <laughs> it's so true. Gillian and Natalie were just awesome in this episode. I love it when guests take a topic and just roll with it. And I know that I'll be coming back to this one. Even if it's just to listen to how positive Gillian and Natalie were in the way that they covered the topic. A massive thanks to both of them again for their time and their input. All the links to the topics that they covered, their profiles, their contact details and links to their books uh, are in the show notes. We are recording regularly and we would love to hear your voice. We've got some great episodes lined up to be recorded this week and next week. So please do get in touch if you'd like to be involved. As always, thank you for listening and we'll see you again soon.